Here's a few discoveries that I made among my orchids uh, for Labor Day. And the discovery isn't that this is in bloom. I've shown this in a previous What's Blooming update, but the fact that when you turn it, looks like something has come by and pollinated one of the flowers and a seed pod has formed. And so I could only think that probably it's a selfing because um, I did have Renanthera Gerald Tan in bloom, but um, something happened and like all the, it, it should have bloomed longer than it did, but all the flowers right here basically died. Um, I don't know if it's like got too hot and it didn't get enough water or something because they were doing pretty well. And then even the unbloomed buds just all fell off. But then here is, um, so this is actually a hybrid. Um, I believe it's Vanda, Packy by, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember it, but it's a hybrid. Is it? Sorry, it's Fuchs Gold by Prelor. So, and it's actually Ascovanda or Ascosenda since it's Ascocentrum crossed to Vanda. And so the question becomes is could a selfing of this be interesting? Um, I mean, I don't flax, so there's nothing to do with it. Should I just cut it off now that this little surprise selfing has occurred? Um, it's been in bloom quite a while now. Um, I don't necessarily wish to um, make the seeds uh, mature since I didn't intend to cross it in the first place. And I certainly can't uh, flask Vandas. So that's the first discovery. My Vanda Costylis Lou Sneery by Prelore has put out a second spike. Um, I didn't see it for a while because it was sort of hidden by the Spanish moss down here, but it's now rising up out of the Spanish moss. And then right next to it is my Brassavola nodosa. Uh, which has two spikes open, and then it has one, and, well, okay, let's see, let me use my finger, two right there, it almost looks like a leaf, and then three little spikes coming in. And I'll put my fingers next to the flowers so you can see how big the flowers are this year. There's my hand. And uh, normally this blooms and it probably doesn't get enough water because I'm an underwaterer and it usually puts out a lot of spikes. And I was hoping that since I gave it lots of water this year and lots of sun, that it would put out more flowers on each spike, but it hasn't done that. It still seems to put about the same amount of flowers on each spike. Like this one has three and this one down here has four. So three are open and there's one more opening up right? But what is different this year is that the flowers are a lot bigger. So there's my thumb. And normally, the and like, of course, my uh, nodosa is kind of floppy. But so you can see the individual long frondy petals here are very long. And mine, yes, yeah, so mine's kind of floppy. It's always been kind of floppy. But basically, the flowers, I think, are about 33% bigger this year than in previous years. And I've had it for about 15 years. So it's a pretty good regular bloomer. Um, I got it in a trade from someone and I actually brought it to Chicago with me. Um, it used to live under lights in Philadelphia. My Howie Awa larva burst is pretty happy. It's been a little bit attacked by um, probably grasshoppers or crickets or something because you see the flowers are sort of eaten. But I have discovered that on each of my existing spikes, in one of the back nodes, unbloomed back nodes, a new little baby spike has come out on every, well, at least three of them. I don't think this one has put out one, but I have one two, three, new sort of mini sort of second blooming spikes, which is pretty cool. Um, so 
definitely how we are lava burst not one of those that you should cut the spike off when it's close to being done blooming because it might bloom or put out another spike from an unbloomed back node my brassiolalia um, sunset glory has put out a second spike and all of the flowers on it are now open and this is the orchid that earlier this summer I thought was dead and I went and bought another one from Peter Lynn of Diamond Orchids and apparently he made his cross with a darker version of Perverata. Oh there's a wasp! Um, so we'll have to see if that one um, has similar flowers or darker flowers. So I have um, several Potanara Hoku gems and I think all the spot patterns are different on them. But I do have two that just say Potanara Hoku Gem. There's this one right here, which only had one flower. And then there's this one, which um, I showed earlier, that is the one um, that was sort of munchied by, uh, again, by bugs or you know crickets, grasshoppers, something like that. And I don't know. I mean, do you think these two look the same? Are they the same one? Should I get rid of Is one an extra? If they have the exact same spot pattern. I also have Hoku Gem Freckles, which does have a different spot pattern. But yes, I have to wonder if those two are the same or not. And maybe it'd be easier to see them if we put some more light on it. I have an Oncidium Shari baby that has come into bloom. Um, it was very strange how it bloomed out. It actually started with just like one flower in the middle of the spike, um, like this. So see how this is this huge spike right here. And then there's just one flower in the middle of the spike. And then, you know, it's got some, I, you know, it's, it's um, branching and it's got like one other flower but then most of the spike is just empty. Um, so it's got two spikes. One of them has all the flowers formed and open, and one is being very strange. And here's an update on um, an example of the remaining catalayas that uh, I put into semi-hydro that I got from Susan. So most of them died, or if they're still alive, um, they look like this, like this Potnara um, Shinchai Diamond, um, which is wrinkly and doesn't look so great. And it, I've not thrown it out yet because it's got like a little tiny bud coming in, like it might still live. But this, uh, Wayne Starburst Volcano Clean did do pretty well. So here it is after a summer of growth. Um, went into semi hydro in March after it arrived from Susan. Um, it's got new roots, right? It's got new growth going on right here. So, you know, stuff can take, but um, Susan thinks that what happened is during shipping, a lot of the orchids actually froze. And that's why. They didn't make it. Um, I'm not really sure. I don't know. I don't know if they were just. It was just like hard. It was still a little bit too cold for them to get started for the year, which is what I would suspect. They just weren't quite ready yet. Um, a lot of the new growths that had come on them, you know, died in transit, uh, or not in transit. They were still alive when they got to me, but then they died later. So here we are. I've got. I think two left in Catalea's and then um, she gave me a bunch of Vandas which actually had to, did really well so they're more sturdy than Catalea's I guess you can say in shipping because they all look great so here's one right here and you can see it has big huge fat roots that it's made this summer and these of course were not blooming size It'll take a while before they make it. So while picking weeds out of my orchid pots, by weeds I mean these little white flowered things, um, 
which I have all over my pots. I found um, Sophro Lelio Catlea Twinkle Twinkle in bloom. I got this from Gold Country Orchids. And not only is it have one bloom here, but I've got one budded sheath. And then I've got a sheath right here that looks like it's got two buds in it, maybe three coming out. So this will be very pretty. And it's in, it's in semi-hydro <laughs> and um, it's not in my um, typical deli container. It's actually in an old peanut jar. 